Hello and welcome to Mark's Madness. I'm alongside Mark Shine, I'm Matt Finkel. This is our final Mark's Madness of the basketball season, and that means we have reached destination Columbus. Let's break down all the regional action, Mark. Beginning in Division I with the still undefeated Lima Senior Spartans. It wasn't easy. Wins no. over Lorraine and Canton McKinley to claim their first regional title since 1992. Well, we've had a lot of runs in Lima Senior games. Games have been very close, very closely played games, and there's a spurt here, a spurt there. you got to overcome some of that. You see some of that in the Canton McKinley game we're going to talk about here in just a moment, but it's been a game of runs for the Spartans lately. So they beat Lorraine up at Toledo, right. and then they go to Akron because of this Akron-Toledo region. Didn't really affect them. Like As you mentioned, the game of runs, a very great basketball game. I recommend you catch a rebroadcast on WOSN if you can between McKinley and Lima Sr. A lot of talent on the floor, and it, it just delivered overall for a regional final. Well, and Matt, two programs with a lot of history. Canton McKinley's been in the state tournament, what, 28 times? They've had a lot of bad luck today since they've been down there. They won it a couple times recently in the 2000s, but that's a storied program with a great tradition and playing close to home had a huge crowd following them. So let's take a look at a couple of plays from that game because Lima Sr. led by as many as 16 points in the fourth quarter. And then the lead was three with about four minutes to go. Well, here we're going to see a steal by Xavier Simpson. He takes the ball to the basket, splits the defenders, goes to the rim. The key part of this is because they scored, he's now able to get his team into their press. Here's the tip away by Flowers, the steal by um, Jarius Ward. He finds Thomas, and Thomas is going to shovel it in inside to Flowers. Let's take a look at that again because what happens on the inbounds pass right here, here's our trap. These two guys are going to get hands up just like they're supposed to. Here's our two defenders looking for the ball coming out of the trap. And what's going to happen with that? And as soon as we get to the replay here, there's the tip, the steal, and then, of course, the transition play where the defense is a little bit slow getting back. Ward finds his cutting teammate right here. And then the underhand shovel pass that ends up in the hands of Flowers. He goes right up and scores. And the Spartans run a roll right here with the basket and then a press offense or a press score. Here's another time when the ball just slips out of the defender's hands. Go to the basket. And if you have a chance to watch Marquavius Wilson, he's going to be a tip. And then here comes a foul. It's not called. Tips the ball in the basket. There's two more points. And once again, here's a transition basket for the Spartans out and running. Here's the pass. Ends up in Rico Stafford's hands. He finishes. Rico, 11 out of 12 from the field. Career high, 23 points. And then an inbounds play for the Spartans, and again, the defense kind of makes an error here. This ends up in Stafford's hands as well. On this particular play, if we look at it again, you can see the defenders bunched around midcourt. So we go to basket here, go to basket here. When the inbounds pass is thrown, it's now two on one. The defender has to commit. He chooses to come out. Here's our cross-court pass layup, and the Spartans go on to win. You know, they trailed in the first half, mentioned they were up by 16. I think they trailed by nine in the first half, were up 16 in the fourth quarter, and then to see a two-point game. I mean, these are the type of games that you know you're going to face at the regional level, but wow, like w what about the experience <laughs> heading into state with these type of regional games? Well, experience is the key, and what you can constantly remind your players when you're in that situation, fellas, it's 32 minutes. Up, down, somewhere in between, you play all 32 minutes. When we get to the fourth quarter, maybe we start figuring it out about pulling the ball out or shooting free throws or those types of situations, but it's a 32-minute game and you just play all of them. Marquavius Wilson had three big threes as well in the third quarter of that game. So congrats to the Spartans. They're on to the state semifinals where they will face Wilmington. And this matchup features the number two team in Division I, the final AP poll, against the number three team in the Wilmington Hurricanes in Division I. This is going to be a good game. It really will. Wilmington's one of those teams that really prides itself defensively. They hold the teams to just about 41 points per game in the tournament. They have a D1 player, Jared Cunningham, who is a 30-point-a-game scorer, is going to the University of Cincinnati as a D1 player. Very talented, 6'5", plays guard, also leads them in rebounding and assists. He's the type of guy you see at Cincinnati, a physical type player. So that'll be a real problem for the Spartans to deal with him. When you're getting 30 a game on a team that's a very defensive-oriented team and doesn't take a lot of shots, you can really score. That game's Friday at 5.15, and it'll be rebroadcast on WOSN at 10 p.m. that night. Now to Division Two, where Ottawa Glendor have had a great run to the regional finals. They beat Lexington, but then lost to Bay in that regional final at Bowling Green by 11 points. It was a sixth straight trip to regionals for the Titans. They fall one game just short of state. Tremendous accomplishment, I think, for Coach Tyson McLaughlin and his team to make it in that sixth consecutive regional. 
a really gutted out game against Lexington. Just two teams were very evenly matched and eventually the Titans win by six. They powered the ball inside a lot, struggled a little bit at the free throw line. That was a concern, but they made enough to win the basketball game and then get to that final game against Bay. You know, they turned the ball over 18 times against Lexington right. and shot less than 50% from the free throw line and still won that game. Not usually a recipe for a victory. And then what happened against Bay? Well, quite honestly, I mistook Bay. And there's an old adage in, in scouting basketball games when you're a coach that says no team is ever as good or as bad as the night you scout them. That was exactly true with Bay Village. I thought after watching the Bay Village Napoleon game that OG was in a great spot, but Bay Village played so much better against OG and did so many little things. They made shots from the perimeter. They kept their big guys, although in foul trouble in the, throughout the basketball game, neither one of them ever fouled out. They had solid point guard play from, from Jalen Jack. And then Freshman makes a big three late. Uh, I think his name's Eric Painter. Made a big three for them late. They just continue to make plays down the stretch. And, and they beat a game OG team that probably didn't play its best game, but partly because Bay Village was so good. And don't forget that Ottawa Glendorf moved up from Division Three to Division right. Two, So to make it to the regional final, Division Up, a, a great accomplishment for the Titans. Speaking of moving up in Division, the girls also did the same. And they were the state runners up last year in Division Three, losing to Versailles. Well, this year in Division Two, they made it right back to that state final. But again, they lost in the state final. A very close matchup against an alter team that has now won two state titles in a row in Division Two on the girls' side. They did, and I know those coaches and the players are going to go back and say, you know what, in the, in the finals of the regional, we defeated Toledo Rogers. That was considered to be an upset. Then a win over Hathaway Brown, a traditionally strong program. So two great wins to get to that final game. Yes, they didn't play as well as they would have liked to against a very talented Kelly and Alder team. But overall, a really good season for the Titans. An injury to Katie Hempflin. She broke right. her finger in that game. Kylie White got in foul trouble. It wasn't their five against Alters five, which is what Coach Yant said. You know, it may be five on five. It's a different game, but you only get one shot, of course. And congrats to the OG ladies who finished as the state runners up in Division Two. Another a great yeah. season for OG basketball well, absolutely. overall. And, and what Coach was talking about, when you get to that level, you want to have all your arrows in the quiver, and he didn't. And obviously, Kettering Alters is a very talented team. When you're matching up with less than full strength, that's a tough chore. All right, Division Three now in LCC, their fifth straight regional appearance, six of the last seven years as well. They yeah. had no problems at the regional level as they haven't had any problems this postseason. We, we just figured it out. Their average margin of victory this postseason is 35 points, and they cruise to victories over Edison by 31 and Ottawa Hills by 25. They're back at state. Yeah, well, typically, Matt, you know what you think of? You go through the district, you get quality opponents that are better than the teams you saw in sectional. Then you get to the regionals, you get teams that are better than what you saw in the district, and yet they just continue to roll. Easy wins over Edison and Ottawa Hills. Quite honestly, I thought in the Ottawa Hills game, they got a little bit sloppy because their lead was so, so exorbitant, so high. I don't think they played as well as they can and as well as they probably have to play in Columbus, but certainly for Coach Kilda's team, they're on a roll right now. You've been around high school basketball for a while. Yeah. Do you think this is one of the most talented Division Three teams you've ever seen? Because, and I bring this up, they've only played two games decided by single digits. We know they lost to Lima Senior in the Lima Cup by two. The other game was a single digit win. I think it was a nine point win over Toledo St. John's, another Division I school. So everybody that they've played, whether it's Division Two, Three, or Four, and what we've seen, what they've done in this postseason, they've blown out. Right. Well, Matt, let's start with the fact that, yes, it's a talented team. You've got, you've got three good guards that can play. Uh, and, of course, you add in Dantez Walton, who's just playing exceptionally well as, in addition to that. Then you bring in Jamison Bradley and you bring in Thomas Williams off the bench. They've been getting solid play out of seven guys. But it's also one of those things. I think Coach Dill has done a great job. In fact, I think the sum is actually better than the parts. Not that the parts aren't talented players, but it's a unit they play very, very well as, as in addition to that. Is it the most talented team individually? I, I don't think so. I think we can go back and find teams that had more individual talent. That's not a knock on your team, Coach. That's a fact that your team is very good individually. But there's just been more individual talent better. But as far as getting to play as a unit, they're really good. It's actually a compliment to Coach Kill because he's got the best out of these guys and brought them together as a team with that goal of a state title. And they're now back at state for the third year in a row where LCC will meet up with Roger Bacon on Thursday. And I just want to point out a mistake that I made last <laughs> week. I thought Villa yeah. Angela St. Joe's lost. Not only did they not lose, they're still alive in the state semifinals and we could be on course we kind of, I, I think we kind of are on course here uh, for a rematch for the third straight year of Villa Angeles St. Joe's against LCC in the Division Three state final. Well, if you're a Roger Bacon fan, that's LCC's first round opponent. You're going, remember back in 2002, we upset LeBron James's team in the, in the state tournament. 
Yes, you did. That was 14 years ago. This is a different set of circumstances. And I think a T-Bird team that's really on a mission right now to get back to that final game. And then we have uh, Lynchburg Clay against uh, Villa, Villa Angela St. Joe. That'll be a pretty good matchup. This St. Joe team graduated five seniors from a year ago. They were Two D1, D1 players. Guys, yeah. yeah. Huge size and so on. They have been able to find ways to win a lot of close basketball games. Uh, the betting chances are it's LCC and St. Joe again. I would love to see that one again. Yep. Elsewhere in Division Three, and, and we talked about Ottawa Hills, well, they ended Liberty Benton's season in the regional semifinal. Great season for the Eagles. It was a 55-45 victory for Ottawa Hills. Master Lasco and Kraft, they were the offense for the Eagles, but it just wasn't enough in, in this regional semi. Yeah, I would agree with that. And again, uh, I think they had a really nice year. Kraft on the inside, Master Lasco on the perimeter. Anthony Mashlasco, wait till you see him next year. A 6'4 guard who can shoot, who can take the ball to the basket, plays defense well. Liberty Benton has a Northwest Ohio star next year to build their program around. Yeah, I remember the, the noise he made as a sophomore. Well, mm -hmm. great junior season. Teammates with the BBC Player of the Year and Nathan Kraft. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if the BBC Player of the Year remains with Liberty Benton in Master Rasco next year. Yeah, that's a really good chance. And obviously, you got to avoid injury and you got to continue to improve and you got to be able to deal with the fact that everybody will try to stop you individually next year. But he is having a really nice career. Next year could be a great one for him. All right, let's finish out with Division Four, where the Lincoln View Lancers claim the regional title at Bowling Green. They're going to state first time since 97. They won it all in 97 with Frank Kill on the roster, right. who will be in Columbus. That's a cool tie-in and, and yep. a nice story. I'm sure they're, the entire Lima community is going to go to support both LCC and Lima Senior and, and Lincoln View, of course. I mean, right. these are the teams that we see all around, and Lincoln View will play Jackson Center. We'll get to them in a minute. But let's talk about the Lancers. They beat Fayette, and then they beat St. Peter's. Two different styles, slow down versus the track meet, but Brett Hammonds, who was just named the D4 Coach of the Year, Co-Coach of the Year, proving his team can win in a lot of different ways. Yeah, that, I would agree with that. And I think what we have is a veteran senior group, and we have talked about that all year. They're able to adapt to what goes on with their opponents. They can play that slower paced game, as they will have to do against Jackson Center this week. They can also go up tempo. And of course, things are going very well for them right now. They're injury free, and we're really looking forward to seeing them in Columbus. So Lincoln View will play Jackson Center, who won the regional at Kettering after beating Southeastern by seven and then Yellow Springs by seven again in the regional final. Yeah, I want to throw a shout out to Coach Elker. We did their game, Mark Miller and I did, when they lost to Anna. There is no way when you watched them play against Anna that night, you thought they would be in the state tournament. He's really brought his guys together. They play super defense, which is going to be an interesting concept because so does Lincoln View. Could well be a low scoring game, but they play very well defensively. They got two really good players, a point guard in Sosby, a post player in Wildermuth. Coach Elk has done a really nice job with his basketball team. And Wildermuth had 19 against Yellow Springs, and Yellow Springs beat Perry. We're right. going to stay in the Kettering Regional for a moment. So Perry's season comes to an end. They made history with the district title. They fall in the regional semis. You know, the guys on the sideline, they yeah. look crushed after yeah. that game. But as we mentioned, a lot of them are juniors, and that taste of the regional, I think it's going to make them want to come back and, and start working for it right away. Well, what's probably happened, I would imagine that Coach Tabor's had a meeting with his staff as, and his team as a whole. Then he's going to have individual meetings with each player and talk about where we need to go for you individually. He'll plan his summer with team camps and those type of opportunities and just see how well they can play. Speaking of teams that lost in the regionals from our area, let's jump back to Bowling Green for a moment mm -hmm. and talk about Macomb. Because St. Peter's beat Macomb in the regional semis at BG before falling to Lincoln View. And St. Peter's young and talented, but Macomb, you know, a, a great season. And, and I just don't think they, they played their best game that night, which is unfortunate. Right. But at the same time, they had put together quite a run to reach the regional. It, it's the brutality of the tournament. You can't have a bad game or an off game. You can't have anybody injured. Can't everybody get sick. Can't miss free throws. It's one of those situations. But when you look at where Macomb was at the end of the year, lost their last three games in the regular season, lost nine out of the last 12 and get to the regionals like they did, congratulations to them. All right, let's close with a little more girls basketball because we had the OG boys and girls were at regionals and state. Well, the Jackson Center boys and girls were at regionals and state. The girls actually, they lost in the state semis on, on that Friday, but they came to support straight from yeah. Columbus to Kettering to watch the boys play in that regional final. And I know the OG community mm -hmm. did the same, same the boys and the girls. So very special. Jackson Center, you know, they had that huge win over Fort Warmie and, and a lot of people maybe saying you know that was their state that well, was their state because they lost to Fort Warmie twice sure. but I don't think they see it that way I mean they lost to a very good Fosteria St. Wendelin team and yeah. just dominant inside by Troy it ran into a Cameron Troika who was 6'4 and multiple pounds and very talented inside and that's correct we got some news Matt first of all we lost Nance Dexholdy yeah. 
Second, we found out after we did the show last week that Jacoby Lane Harvey, who we were railing around about not making all district, actually did make second team all district. Today's rant, Connor Lotzenheiser is not in the top three teams in the state of Ohio in Division IV. If you saw Connor Lotzenheiser play, you cannot find 30 basketball players in the state of Ohio better than what he did this year. That's an injustice. I kept looking for it to come across Twitter last night. Oh, we made a mistake like we did with Jacoby Lane Harvey. He belongs on the all-league team or all-Ohio team, too. Yeah, that's a big injustice. I don't think Connor's going to lose too much sleep over that. He knows what he accomplished, Uh, but it would have been nice to see him receive that honor. All right, let's take a look at our rebroadcast schedule. It's pretty straightforward. We will have rebroadcasts of all three of the state semifinals featuring local teams, and it begins Thursday at 10 p.m. on the West Ohio Sports Network with Roger Bacon and LCC in the Division Three state semifinals. Friday at 10 on WTLW, we'll have the Jackson Center and Lincoln View D4 game, and then also at 10 on WOSN, Lima Senior and Wilmington the D1 state semis, and those will be replayed throughout the week on WOSN, so check the rebroadcast schedule online at WOSN.tv. Well, we did it, Mark. Yes. That's it for Mark's yeah, Madness. Year. Thank you so much for all the hard work you put into prepping for this show, and go back and should thank Mark Miller as well for yep. the football. It was a great season of Mark's Madness. We can't wait to do it again next year. For Mark Shine, I'm Matt Finkel. Thanks for joining us this basketball season.